but of course mm. very accurate like close to the hoop so just calling a referee over there to watch this shot making sure that uh, she doesn't do a crush which is when she strikes the ball uh, and if she does strike it in the wrong direction, if it goes against the leg, into the leg, uh, a crush would occur being a, a foul there. So referee's just taking time to mark the position of that yellow and we'll be watching very closely. It looks like you might have a referee in training as well. <laughs> well I thought he was going in for a cuddle. <laughs> Looked to be a nice clean shot. Yeah, but is it now on the other wire? Yeah, it, it <laughs> does look that way, doesn't it? It looks like she's overheated a bit. Well, I'm not sure. It could just be our camera angle and it could actually be further back than, than we think it might be. Ah, it is now. <laughs> so while we're watching uh, this this next rotation being played back in um let's hear about you what what's your croquet career well Alison I've only been playing croquet about three and a half years um I joined my local club Queen Moon Croquet Club <clears throat> and played there for about a year I guess uh, and it was just all social for me um and about a year after playing I joined Canberra Croquet Club uh, and started playing uh, regional tournaments to begin with and then some state and national tournaments. Um, so I, I played here at, uh, at Cairn Lee uh, several times in the Australian Open, uh, predominantly play in, uh, in Sydney and New South Wales competitions. Uh, I only play GC. I, I'm not, I've not been brave enough to learn AC yet. But I'm sure that uh, <laughs> the day will come. <laughs> and how about yourself, Alison? Uh, well, I mainly play AC. Um, and uh, the reason I don't play GC is uh, because I don't have the right temperament. You have to be, <laughs> um, like I said earlier, you've got to just keep going. And I get so cross. Um, and I'm. I'm you know, if I fail fail the hoop, that's it. I'm you know, I'm just frustrated <sighs> and I've had enough really. And the problem with golf croquet is you can't then just wander off the lawn and go and find a glass of something yummy, um, <sighs> and just chill out while you watch your opponent go round until they can do something silly, and then you can go back on and play. So I think, um, but AC, I've been playing for about. Uh, oof, I don't know, eight years maybe, let's say, um, and thoroughly enjoy it. So, um, Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's, <clears throat> but I do love to watch golf croquet. Golf croquet is, you know, definitely a spectator sport. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I, I must admit, when I first started playing golf croquet, I thought, how hard can this game be? Six hoops, four balls. It can't <laughs> be that difficult. But uh, I tell you what, the, the tactics and strategy at, at this level, um, I'm still learning. It, it's just amazing. So a nice shot there that by Julie. That was an Julie. excellent She's, shot. Uh, hit her red onto the uh, onto the yellow. Yellow ran the hoop, and I, I dare say her red would be in quite a nice position near hoop seven now. Not in a runnable position by the looks yeah. of it, but it's certainly a lot closer. And just of note, those now, that uh, watched that last game between John and Shane, Julie is Shane's sister. Interesting. 
interestingly, there's actually a lot of family collections within croquet. There's uh, lots of um, you know parents and, and children or siblings that also play. I think that what happens is when somebody gets a little bit hooked on croquet, you can't help but bring in somebody else that you know. <laughs> it's you know, and and inevitably they then get hooked as well. You sort of get the croquet bug. Yeah, it has that effect, doesn't it? It has that effect. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I was going to say Janine. I actually know Janine uh, because she has been working tirelessly on some of the design work for the McRobertson Shield, which is going to be going ahead in a week's time in Kenley. And uh, and I've been um, working with some of the team for the McRobertson Shield promotions. So it's actually really nice to see one of my one of my new new friends. From my uh, from the from the group that I've been working with, <coughs> playing it's great. That is great. A, what a wonderful story. Of course, the McRobs coming up, like you said, in, uh, in a week's time. It's uh, everyone is looking forward to this event. It is. It is. So there's uh, four countries that will be playing in the in the McRobs and Shield. So. If there's anyone out there that is watching this and doesn't really know what croquet is all about, the McRobertson Shield is uh, it's association croquet, and it's a little bit a little bit like the Association Croquet's World Cup, basically. Mm. Um, but it's the World Team Championships for Association <clears throat> Croquet. Golf croquet also has a World Team Championship played on a on a rotation with the four countries. Uh, oh no, it's not. Sorry, it's more, isn't it? more countries and they um that's called the open shore shield maybe you'll get to play in that one day kevin oh i could only dream of awesome. <laughs> now an attempted clearance there by janine just missed the red So Janine's ranked 304 in Australia. Hoop 7 is a really interesting hoop. So especially when they come up to it level. So you get through Hoop 7 cleanly and you get down to Hoop 8 and it's quite often the first chance you get to go quite far ahead of your opponent. So it's quite a key hoop, mm. hoop seven. It is indeed, yes. So there's always a little bit of a yeah. battle, which is nice to watch. Oh, look at this. We've got some facts coming in. This event is named after Owen Edwards, who was a tournament referee for a past Mac Robertson Shield. What a link. Mm. Right, red playing back into position. That's a nice position. I think it's blocked black, I think, from the hoop. No, it hasn't. Oh, pulled that one a little wide. Oh, shame. So Julie now in a very strong position with both her balls directly in front of the hoop. Not having any luck oh, with that attempt. Frustration there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I just wonder whether her red can see that uh, hoop or yellow is is blocking that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I can't quite work it out. We'll find out in a minute. So I think when blue plays in, we'll probably go round to the other angle. Yeah, there you yeah. go. 
uh, I think that just nudged red. So blue's just played in, so it's red to play. Uh, yeah, she's going to take black away. Yeah. Yeah. She's obviously happy with where her yellow ball's sitting. Yeah. Although black will still have a shot at yellow there. I think she was hoping maybe to get that a bit uh, a bit further away, even potentially uh, wire it from yellow. But uh, how far so, how far down the down the uh, lawn has red come? Uh, I think she kicked off to the left. So I'm not sure. I, Oh, there we could go. be around yeah, the centre. Okay. But it's it's halfway down, so she's in quite a good position with red from there anyway. She is. She is indeed, yeah. So that's worked out quite well there. Yeah, I think this is Julie in quite a good position here. I wonder how far down she can run with, with yellow. Oh, she's got a few yards down there. I so think was... main thing is not to uh, not to give yourself a hampered shot. So just trickling the ball through a few inches is uh, not the best idea. But she's uh, she struck it quite firmly and looks like she got about uh, yeah about six seven yards down. So 4-3 to Julie. And Janine has gone long. So she's taking the pressure right off Julie there. Yeah, so Julie is going to be the first one probably then to get in front of uh, Heap 8 now. So it's like I said earlier, you know, for, for people out there watching, if you get to the point when you're kind of level or, you know, a, a, there's just one or two hoops in it at that point, it's not too difficult then to get quite far ahead. And that was a good shot in. So Black's uh, taken up position. It'd be interesting to have a closer look at that red to see whether it's against the wire or it's in a, uh, a runnable position. But uh, Lou's I sitting nicely behind. But... Yeah, Blue's in a good position there to, to take care of that red. Yeah, it, it does look fairly central, doesn't it, Alison? really hard from this camera angle but I think it is I think I think it's in the middle we'll see I mean we'll, we'll be able to see what, what happened you know if she just if she takes position then clearly it's on a wire yeah <clears throat> oh no it's, no it's in position so what she's tried to do is go back through the heat to the way and knock red away leaving blue probably in in uh, in the middle of the heap. Hmm. I think she was hoping potentially to uh, just follow through with her blue. Triple through the back of the hoop. So again, the referee's on the lawn to uh, mark the position of, of red. Just in case Julie uh, faults here, but uh, it looks as though if it's a bit hard to see, isn't it? To, she may be able to run that. I think she's backing herself to run it. Oh, it's definitely angled there. You can see the way, you know, in the direction that she is standing. Uh, that's jaws. No, not quite in the jaws there. 
but I think Blue's in a good enough position to take care of Red. So I think Black will probably uh, dispatch Yellow to the boundary. Yeah. I'm going to say this is back to position. Indeed. And it's a bit long. Yeah, nice balling. I think she had to go long there, Alison, because there's every chance if she'd have stuck it right in front that uh, if Blue is successful in clearing this red, it may have taken yellow away as well. But uh, yeah, obviously didn't get that red as far yeah. as what she wanted to. So as you so rightly said before, Alison, this gives Julie now a chance to extend that lead to five, three. Is she successful with this hoop run? <clears throat> yeah. And she there is. Well done, Julie. So what is your handicap, Kevin, after three and a half years of playing? So my handicap's a zero. <gasps> wow. You got there quick. <laughs> I'll be <think> very lucky. <laughs> well, okay, sometimes you need a bit of luck, but you've got to have the skill that backs it up as well. So that's a good first have ball in that black ball. It's, it's long. Um, I, I, my main sport was football, soccer. But I have played a bit of a, a misspent youth playing pool and snooker. Um, oh. So for me, there's there's a lot of similarities, and particularly in those two sports, uh, to croquet. You know, when you want to hit a ball away, you'll know where to hit the ball. You'll know where your striking ball is going to end up. Um, so it, it made a lot of sense to me, croquet and. Uh, um, I, yeah, I didn't I think, find it. I think it uh, yeah. understanding the natural angles of uh, a ball on uh, when a ball falls onto another ball and what's going to happen next. Pool players, yes. snooker players, just get it. <laughs> so yes, it's, it's yeah, very, very much so. easy, I think, to then trans see the transition into croquet. The difficulty, of mm. course, is uh, using a cue is wildly different from using a mallet physically. <laughs> However, yes. the similarities, i.e. keep still, um, you know, keep your weight centered uh, to a point, keep your core. There's all of these things which are also similar to the, to the two different yeah. sports. A lot, of, uh, a lot of transferable skills. Definitely. Mm. So we've played all the balls into this hoop now. This is hoop nine. Um, yellow to play. Uh, yellow has, I think yellow is trying to uh, send black to the boundary, but sadly just clipped it. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see what... Janine does here, whether she's going to go in or take care of Red. She's going to block. She's going to try and block. <laughs> if she didn't block. Uh, I don't think she was attempting a block there because uh, Black's not in a position to oh, run. Okay. So... Um, Janine is, is, is uh, sorry, Julie's quite correct in her uh, stroke there, getting rid of that blue because that's the danger ball. That's in a runnable position. And she's left her red in a very nice position, but not for long. <clears throat> yeah, but that wasn't ideal. So, no. again, because black clipped uh, red, it didn't hit its centre ball. What happened is, is uh, it, it's it's flown off to, well, 
you know, halfway down the, the south, halfway along the south boundary. So she's now left herself a longer shot to then come back in again. So red and yellow were, you know, red and yellow's actually in a decent position at this heat now. Because she's essentially she's first ball in with the next rotation. That's right. That's right. And both red and yellow are in uh, runnable positions. So, uh, yeah, it's essential when you are taking those shots to clear those balls. Um, you know, every player tries to uh, centre ball it. Oh, it that work out that way. That's a nice She's ball. In in the That's really put the pressure on Julie. Yeah, she has a wonderful shot from the boundary there. So Janine's just having a look at that yellow ball to see whether uh, she believes it's in a it's any danger to uh, her blue ball, and it looks to be in a good jumping position. So we'll see what uh, Janine does here. I'm not sure what she was planning on doing there it might have been mm. just to try and nudge blue because she could have just tried to nudge blue and it would have gone through but instead True, I, yeah. I think yellow yellow might be able to clip it out here i mean you catch this slightly wrong and that blue is going to go through the hoop good shot oh, good shot good clearance <clears throat> Obviously, a little further out than what we thought. I thought it was a bit, a uh, bit further in the hoop than that. So did I. Oh, that was a good shot. Nice centre ball. Yep. Right, red to play. And red has taken a good position. That was taking position, hoping to block red from the hoop, I'm guessing. Oh, so Judy just unsuccessful there, trying to clear that black away, just hitting into the uh, the hoop, but hanging around, which is uh, which is nice. And she may even have a little block of blue to red. Indeed, she did. So that was a uh, that was. Quite lucky there for Julie to, to get that block. Right then, a jump coming up here. Oh, I think she might be trying to clear that black, Alison, I think. Oh, really? Oh, that was the dangerous <laughs> but you're right there was certainly a interesting uh, I, a good position for red to uh, to jump I, I guess the the danger of it is if uh, you're not successful then it's black hoop it's a black hoop you know black sitting directly in front but uh, yeah, yeah but, it's interesting uh, that she, she chose to clear I don't know. I mean, she's been playing really well, so I, uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is when you're on the lawn, you've got to make the decision that is right for you at the time. So as much as any Correct. commentator yeah. could say, well, you could do this and you should do that, 
you're not the one actually playing and it's very different out there on the lawn on your own you know it's not even like a team sport you've got oh, there's no one else to talk to <laughs> you have the conversation in your head and you walk around that's and you right. all the different options um and that was the best option for her at that time yep exactly right and you've got to play to your strengths you know jumping uh, i'm not sure um you know there are a few players that jumping isn't uh isn't one of their party tricks that they uh, can pull off. So, you know, maybe it just come down to clearing was the best option for her. And, and that was a lovely clearance again, but uh, ended up getting that black away, but uh, not far enough, unfortunately. Right then, so we talked earlier on about how some heats can be over in a flash and others not. <laughs> this is one of those <laughs> heats that's not. <laughs> it's a grand old battle. Loop nine. So yellow back in first again. We've got blue to play. I think blue's just going in, take position, don't do anything fancy. Possibly try and block red from anywhere near. Well, I don't know. Can red see the hoof at all? Is it too far out? The angle's too wide. Yeah, I think that angle's too wide for red to, to do anything about uh, potentially running the hoop. So I think. Uh, and with that blue just falling in behind the hoop, that's really swung things in there. Julie's favour now, so I think Red will probably just take up a take up position and maybe try and get wide from Blue, which it looks like she's done. That's very nice if she has. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, great little shot that one. Mm, it was. That's really put the pressure on now. So it's interesting, yeah, Janine sure. chose that shot. It looks like she was just going to go for a block rather than uh, clearing yellow. Well, I mean, she may have been trying to just snuggle in. Um, because sometimes if you, if you can just play that really delicate shot where you just play it dead weight and then sit on, for example, sitting on red there would have meant that yellow didn't have a shot at the hoop and, and red would have been hampered. So although, mm. um, okay, so, so uh, red and yellow are still in a good position, but, or better position, but they've still got to probably go through another rotation to get a ball through the hoop. And therefore with another rotation comes another set of possibilities. That's exactly right. Yeah, good point. Good point. So it looks like Julie may be going for this uh, a jump here which is, to me, a little strange because uh, her other ball is not sitting in a good spot to get down to hoop 10. But a hoop's a hoop. That extends her lead out to 6-3. I think, yeah, oh, red has gone on. That's quite far. Hmm. Yellow That's a nice is jump. not pretty. <clears throat> no, no, it's, it's not. And... Uh, but neither is blue. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah, the, neither of them in good spots. And that's a lovely approach there from uh, Janine. Now, oh, I think red can see it. I don't think black has got a, uh, has, uh, is wide from red. I think red can see black. But uh, I think that's what she was certainly attempting to do. Well, good position for Julie at the moment, really. So she's 6-3, three, three, three in the lead, uh, one heat to go. 
been playing pretty well, but they both have. I don't think Janine has done anything particularly wrong. I just think it's not really gone in her favour. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. An unlucky roll there for Julia. Chose to roll right as opposed to left. <laughs> Trying to get the, the block on black to the hoop. Nice hoop. Well done. Good approach. Good finish. Four six. Yeah, that's good. And she's clawed back a, a, a hoop there, so that she's now only two behind. Um, and yeah, I mean, where, basically where black is <clears throat> is then actually, you know, it's not that far from a hoop ten to hoop a hoop eleven. So to do the clearance Correct. after uh, red and yellow have played in, it's not awful. Hmm. That's right. So that but Janine's picked up the fact that yeah. yellow was offside. So she's chose to uh, send it to the um, penalty area. Yeah, that's just gone a bit long there, hasn't it? I think that's a bit hard as well. Is it going to slow up? Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, right in front, but not, not an ideal position given where yellow is. <laughs> no, I think I'd, I'd be trying to, if, if I was blue there, I think I would have gone um, further north. So put a little yeah, bit of distance bit in. So heat running position, but a bit deeper, that's right. Yeah, so uh, the choices there, I think, was going deeper, as you mentioned there, or even uh, a couple of yards short of that hoop is fine. Uh, and that just sort of keeps yellow honest. And by that I mean it doesn't allow yellow just to sneak in front of that hoop and sit there. Blue will then have yeah. that hoop covered. Or have that ball covered, rather. So this will be a stop shot. Bye bye, blue. Well picked. Well picked. See, now that is something else that's similar to snooker or, you know, few sports. Um, so the stun shot is, I think, what they would call it in the few sports. Um, and actually, in golf croquet, I think often it's called stun shot. Um, I I always uh, call it a stop shot because I'm a associate, a predominantly association with croquet player. Um, but the idea is similar. So you have one ball that skids into another ball. So your the, the first ball that you that you that you struck um, stops dead, and the other one goes a long way away. And what she's done is she's used that shot to to, to that with yellow to keep uh, good control of the hoop. Yeah, just overplayed that one there, Julie, with that red. It's gone, I think she wanted that in a nice running position. And then use her other ball to dispatch Janine's, Janine's ball. But uh, she's just gone along with that red. <clears throat> Another stop shot coming up. Oh, maybe not. That's that she will be disappointed with. So talking of stop shots, it's exactly what she needs to do now, just uh, left of centre. And that'll get rid of that black and push her red sitting in a nice runnable position. 
just like that. Yeah, nice ball in there from Janine. <coughs> so both Janine's balls are uh, in lovely position, nice wonderful positions. She's really putting the pressure on uh, on Julie now. Okay, this is blue, so put it back to 6.5. Oh, shame. It would have been ideal for her to run that nice and cleanly and down to mm. 6.12. Um, I'm pretty sure red can clear that out of position there. And interestingly, Oh, it's, it is difficult. I mean, because <laughs> of course you clear it out and, you know, black will just run. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think what she's trying to do is clear that blue and just replace um, the red. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was good. <clears throat> This is a jump coming up now. Yeah, I think you're right, Alison. I think you're right. I can't really see what other option there is. There we go. Yes. Great jump. Oh, and I'm lucky not to score two hoops bit. with that one jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit heavy there. So it's a not little bit quite heavy, far yeah. south. So that's brought it back to uh, five six now for Janine. So she's clawing her way back well. She has indeed. But I've got a horrible feeling that this this is going to be a bit awkward. I'm guessing red can uh, red can go through the PK fine so it should be able to go through and take fairly good position if you get them a good weight. Oh no, okay. I'm not sure what uh, Janine can see here with this black, whether that yellow ball is wired or not. I think it looks it's like it may be in a wonderful position. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, maybe she's going to try going through the hoop. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Well, here we go. This is the uh, shot for, for Yellow to win the game, for Julie to win. She's held onto that lead pretty much all the way through. Well done. Well run. Well done. Well played, both of them, I think. And I think that Janine, actually, she brought the game back well. It's, it's really hard uh, coming from 
you know, sort of she was level there at three all. And then Julie took those two hoops, the, you know, the difficult ones over there. Um, and then she pulled it back a little bit, but not quite. Mm. Well, thank you very much for that fantastic commentary, uh, Alison and Kevin. Uh, you've had a had a, a long morning so far, and uh, Alison, you've had a, a very long evening. It's uh, way past uh, bedtime there in the UK. <laughs> well, it's uh, twenty past midnight here, and uh, yeah. but I've really enjoyed the croquet. It's been great to watch, and it's been great to be involved, and lovely to meet new people like Kevin, which has been great, and um, yeah. And I think it's 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 working really well. You guys are putting out a great live stream. Well done. Well, before you go, um, I'd just like to discuss a couple of positions with you and Kevin, because Kevin, Kevin will be off soon as well, because Trish and I will be taking over the, the commentary for the rest of the morning. Uh, but I did actually take the opportunity to record a couple of, of key positions in the game between Shane and John. And I just wanted to... To talk to you about them from a from your perspective as you were uh, providing the narrative so i don't know whether scarlet if we can uh, patch through the the screen yeah so it's a little bit a little bit fuzzy because it's coming from my house in sydney but um basically there was a very interesting situation uh with the scores at at four two uh to shane and shane's playing the blue ball which you can see is is right on the northern boundary there and and blocking the his his view of of hoop 7 is the uh, uh, is the, the the yellow and red ball which both of which are actually runners in themselves and uh, i think at the time you were, you were both very surprised that um, shane would would try a jump shot what did you did you have any feelings at the time about that Do you know, I, I, honestly, I can't remember. I, but I, th I think the, uh, the difficulty with commentating is you've also, you're sat here thinking, what would I do? And as I am rubbish at jump shots myself, <laughs> I've been looking at that thinking, absolutely no way. However, I genuinely can't think of um, what else I would do. I mean, I guess taking position... Um, you know, it doesn't do anything because, you know, I, I think my, my my answer at the time was maybe you could just take a nice uh, controlled nudge yellow onto, so promote yellow onto red and not red just that's right. I remember you saying it. Position. The, yeah. Um, I, but I that's, remember you that's saying at the time you because, might do that. Yeah, that's, but that's just my <coughs> choice of shots. Is it the best choice of shot? Not necessarily for that player. Yeah. And, and, well, I, I think the, the fact that yeah, the fact that they're yellow and red. I mean, if if, if they are close together, I think the obvious shot would have been a, a cannon, uh, hitting red, uh, hitting yellow onto red. But you know, if if there's about a yard between them, I think what would have possibly been going through Shane's mind would. Uh, not necessarily scoring the hoop with that jump, but hopefully clearing red with the jump. But the fact that he scored the hoop, it was just a bonus, I think. He might have just been going for a clearance on that red uh, and just trying to get yeah. over the top of yellow and trying to clear that red. Yeah. No, that's a good point, Kevin. Because uh, And you're right. Often uh, a, a jump is actually a really effective way of clearing and and yes. not putting your opponent through the hoop <laughs> yes yes very much so so there was another there was another interesting situation as well this was uh on a uh, hoop eight and uh, the position that um john found himself in he's playing red in this position and he he was he had to try and clear the black from from its uh, very strong position that we can just uh, we can just zoom down to that. So black was in a it was in a reasonable position to to make the hoop or at least clear the the yellow. So John uh, was going here for the the black. Now 
Uh, it's a shot of about seven yards. So you'd normally expect uh, John to make that one, Kevin. Yeah, for sure. That's your, that's your bread and butter distance, seven yards. Okay. And in fact, if we if we go over to the uh, to the little simulator that we've got built into this, and we say we're playing the red ball and the target is the black, uh, and then go and have a look at the, the the shot. So we can just pan back and have a look at that's the shot that. Uh, the red ball has got. You can see the red ball up here shooting towards the black yeah. with a bit of pace on it. If we if we take that shot and put that through the simulator, then you can see that most of the time, in fact, eight out of ten times, John would make that shot. Now, having made the shot, it would be quite, there'd be a lot of scatter. So sometimes he'd hit mm. the shot and it would then hit yellow. Sometimes it would Ping, ping off in all sorts of different directions so a lot of variability but eight out of ten times he'd make that shot now of course in the game itself he he didn't make the shot uh, and the uh, the red uh, came all the way through uh, to the to the boundary so so the next so it came all the way through to there and that was the uh, the result but anyway I thought the two interesting situations there uh, for us to discuss after the game and uh, Thanks very much, Scarlett, for popping that up. When we when we have this little recording and simulator thing happening in, in the competition to come, it'll all look a lot clearer because it won't be coming down the uh, through Singapore. <laughs> this is probably where our our signal is coming through from at the moment. Um, and uh, but I think that that should be great for for discussion. So thanks for indulging yeah, me in that one. That's terrific. That looks great, so I'll Gareth. Just stop sharing. Now we'll go back to the game, and in fact, uh, I think the time has come. We might as well uh, uh, just start on with a new commentary theme. So thanks very much again to Alison and Kevin for their fantastic insights, uh, and their, their their great rapport this morning as well. It was fantastic listening to the two of you uh, chatting away there like old friends too. So thank you very much for that. It was a pleasure, Gareth. Oh, thank well, you, Alison. Thank you for having. Yeah, no, thank you, Kevin, and thank you all for having me. It's uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be involved with your events over there. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, myself and Trish Devlin will be will be next up and see what game they've they've given us to uh, to cover. I think it's going to be Owen Dickinson and Richard Parks. Hello, <clears throat> hello, Gareth. I'm I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Trish. Loud and clear. And fa oh, fantastic to hey, be good, commentating good with you again. You. It's been a little while. Yes, it has been. It, am I seeing Lester on the screen? There is that. Is that Lester? I think that is Lester. Yeah, I thought we were going to get. Oh no! Now we're seeing Owen. Oh, There's Owen. Okay. Uh, his There's Owen. Characteristic. Yeah. Uh, what do they call that hat with the big flap of? material there on the back it's a is that a legionnaire i think it looks like lawrence lawrence of arabia lawrence of arabia right okay <laughs> so so uh, so we've got owen and, and uh, richard parks playing we're not quite sure of the score it looks like they've played two hoops already yeah so uh richard's red and yellow by the look of it i can't quite see behind his feet but looks like it. Uh, yeah. You think the yellow? That was, was a nice clearance on black. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, held good position for yellow, but of course Owen's not very far away, so I think he'll be clearing that yellow pretty promptly. Yes, only uh, three or four yards away, and a nice shot keeping the, the blue in the vicinity and sending the yellow off to the boundary. So what would you call Richard's hat? Um, that's a sort of hat one wears at the beach, isn't it, that one? <laughs> I don't know what that's called, though. <laughs> They're... They're obviously expecting a bit of sun at Cairnley this week, which will be a nice change from how it's been down there. 
Yes, it's been pretty brutal down there, hasn't it? So own two two nil up at the moment. And an attempt at the hoop from Richard. Uh, good six, seven yard attempt. Rattled the jaws, stayed in the vicinity. I think Owen it looks like Owen's decided he'd rather clear red. He looks at he's looking at red, not the hoop. Yep. And then he, is it yep so a very even match up here trish uh richard parks is about number 31 in australia and owen dickinson is 21 in australia uh, but to put that into world terms that uh, owen's two, 260 and richard is 300 so they, they are pretty pretty evenly matched and a lot of experience at playing each other too. They're both Metropolitan Melbourne players and they would very often have been matched up. Yes, no, they would know each other's games very well. 